Okay. In qualifying, more bad news. If you're a Daniel Ricciardo fan, that is, because I'm starting to feel like that this is gonna be Daniel Ricciardo's last year in Formula One. If he doesn't start performing better than Yuki from say Japan and, and for the rest of the season, I don't foresee anyone wanting him on the grid next year. In qualifying, Daniel puts in a pretty good lap. This led to some really strange conversations after qualifying about how good Daniel Ricciardo's lap was, but because he went out of track limits, his lap time was deleted, dropping him down to a P18 start. Why are we talking about how good of a lap it is? In qualifying, if you go out of track limits, your time gets deleted, therefore it's not a good lap. Come on Daniel, get your head in the game. Okay, onto the Grand Prix. I guess it's pretty weird to say that no one crashed in turn one, considering everything that happened last year. I think it was still in lap one, or is it the start of lap two? So Sainz does an incredible overtake of Max Verstappen. And I feel like everyone that was watching this race is on the edge of their seat thinking, okay, we have a race on our hands. Of course, it wasn't Max's poor driving or a bad setup in the Red Bull. Sure enough, it was a mechanical issue with Max's car. Max is out of the Grand Prix and I can just feel like every driver on the grid is salivating at an opportunity for P1. Last Grand Prix, I mentioned a long pit stop. And in that Grand Prix, I mentioned, wow, this happened again. So each three race this year for the Kick Sauber team, they have had some horrendously long pit stops. They really need to get on this fast, especially how Kick Sauber is going to be transitioning into the Audi team in the next few years. How are they going to be poaching for drivers if they can't demonstrate that they can pull a pit stop together, especially when you can see a wheel nut bounce across the pit lane. That's hugely dangerous and also kind of hilarious. Lap 17, Hamilton's engine dies. Hamilton wasn't really performing that well in the grid. He was kind of getting overtaken. It wasn't really pushing forward. Usually when Hamilton does qualify lower down in the grid, he does perform some quick overtakes, even when he is not happy with the car. That didn't happen this race. By lap 17, Hamilton was pretty much where he started. His engine just completely stops. If you watch the footage and listen to what happens, it's literally like he just turned the car off. It wasn't like a piston exploded or something like that with oil spewing everywhere. Esteban Ocon has a smoking rear brake. He pulls it into a pit stop, they inspect it. Alpine send the car back out and just pray that it sorts itself out. It ended up being one of the visor tear offs getting caught in the rear brake. From this point on in the race, Sainz is just sitting out in front. Sergio Perez is starting to speed through the track, dispatching Alonso. Team orders swap Oscar Piastri and Lando Norris. Oscar is an absolute champ. Lando Norris had younger tires. Piastri gets a call. Hey, Lando's got younger tires in you. Let's switch to increase our opportunity for points. Oscar does exactly as he's asked. Many people have said it, but I really firmly believe that Oscar Piastri is outperforming his already high expectations. I can't wait to see what happens next with Oscar Piastri. Lap 37, we get an embarrassing long pit stop again for Kick Sauber, but then Bottas comes in and they give him a 3.8 second pit stop. So at least they can do it right occasionally. The last 20 laps of the race is just good solid racing. Nothing hugely exciting happens. Now, in the last lap, we get a bit of controversy. George is chasing Alonso in the last lap, very close. Opportunities for overtake exist. Alonso breaks heading into the corner. It would be what is considered extraneous braking or unusual driving. This caused George Russell in his Mercedes get caught in Alonso's dirty air, braking too hard. He goes off the track flips the car on its side into oncoming traffic. Thankfully, he's not hurt. At the time, I just thought this was a George Russell mistake. It turns out the stewards reviewed this incident, and gave Fernando Alonso a 20 second penalty. Uh, he's come out since saying that he doesn't agree with this and thinks that he was driving fairly. He was just good hard racing. Okay, Carlos Sainz crosses the line with a virtual safety car singing. You get to see Gunther Steiner doing post-race interviews. Actually, he wasn't that great, but it was good to see him. And I'm sure if he keeps doing this kind of thing, he will get better at the interviews. The drivers seem to have trouble hearing him, so hopefully he can work that out and it's not just an accent thing. Perhaps it's an enunciation thing. Hey, look, I'm trying to get better at that stuff too. It was an incredible race and one that I thoroughly enjoyed. 
This year is shaping up to be the busiest for off-track drama, and this weekend was no exception. This is Aliens in the Paddock. Thank you for watching. I'll see you after the next race in Japan.